I lived in Brooklyn for 20 years in the same six block radius. I've seen this neighborhood change dramatically over that time in Crown Heights. The new gentrifying inhabitants and the longtime residents literally occupy the exact same streets. Rarely do they interact. They exist in two separate worlds right in this same neighborhood. And so I've always wanted to work on something that looked at those changes and considered what it might look like had the community not been gentrified so rapidly. The name of my project is The Frozen Neighborhoods, and it examines a speculative world here in Brooklyn through a series of renderings. In this world, climate change has exacerbated to the point where the government has granted the individual a certain amount of mobility credits that determine where you can go and how far you can travel but the rich have purchased much of the mobility credits and poor marginalized communities are left without them. They're now cut off from the larger world. And so these communities develop sustainable practices and new technologies serving the needs of the community. The inhabitants of this community have overtaken the MTA the MTA now stands for Main Threshold Access. Trains, instead of shuttling you from one place to the other, are now virtual kiosks where you can go and engage in virtual travel, meet family around the world, take educational lessons, job training. So really imagining this new self-contained world in Brooklyn. Another rendering has a row of storefront churches, but it's also a seed vault. And at the base of the building is a kind of farmer's market. It has a large billboard at the top that says, plant seeds grow blessings. I'm very much fascinated with storefront churches in Brooklyn and how they have existed as spaces for not only religious services, but also they took a lot of responsibility of providing social services that the government doesn't provide. Thinking of highly self-organized spaces and communities is a way of opening up the idea of public versus private, of power versus authority. Nimbyism is not in my backyard. And that is the kind of entitled, meddling, busybody that is so concerned with where someone is going. And in the world we live in, oftentimes, it is a white person who's concerned with how many Black kids are congregating in a mall, or whether these kids have a right to swim in this pool. There's a policing around public space around access. The powers that be will always say you need to monitor and to control people. And the reality is you don't need that when you provide the basic needs of a community and a population. So in this speculative world that I'm creating, there is a very sustainable communal practice so all of these public spaces are no longer being policed or watched or controlled. People will simply act in good faith as participants in this community and in this world. Creating the solution is about setting up scenarios that might elicit discourse. There isn't necessarily a story or a character you're following I'm just interested in setting up glimpses into this world that allow for interpretation. For me, speculative fiction allows me the necessary flexibility to examine contemporary issues, but create new frameworks for exploring them. Fiction and speculative works have a way of informing reality. 
almost all technology that we have has come through science fiction, has come through narratives, has come through imagining. So there's more of a relationship to creative, open-ended thinking and design and architecture than we tend to think.